Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duckbricks. I'm Chris, and just to provide some context for this video, we recently had a really cool collaboration with the LEGO Group to showcase the new LEGO Ninjago book, Quest for the Lost Powers. This video right here is actually a video that I initially made for their kids app, LEGO Life, where I basically talked a little bit about the brand new book, particularly from a perspective of parents wanting to buy the book for their kids. But I figured maybe why not just post some of the information on YouTube as well, in case folks are curious what it's all about. If you don't know the LEGO Life app, make sure to check it out on the App Store or Google Play Store, where you can find all sorts of cool content that's exclusive to their app. With that, let's jump right in to the vid. Hi, I'm Duckbricks, and today we are going to be sitting down and talking about the latest LEGO Ninjago book, Quest for the Lost Powers. It tells the tale of four main heroes who encounter problems and challenges in their personal lives and overcome emotional barriers to unlock the true potential of their elemental powers. Following the main four ninja, Kai, Jay, Zane, and Cole, this book is split into four parts, with each part focusing on a lesson or morality for kids to be able to take home and learn more about what it means to be a ninja. And so, let's jump up, kick back, whip around, and spin, and jump right into this book. Quest for the Lost Powers is a new LEGO Ninjago book that is written by Tracy West and Adam Beechin, who have been writing for the LEGO Ninjago book series for quite a number of years. It is a direct continuation of where the story left off in the latest season of the television show, which really focuses in on four of the main characters and dives deep into them overcoming emotional and personal barriers in order to unlock their elemental powers. Many of these characters have something emotionally that's holding them back. Whether it be Fire Ninja Kai's inability to accept help from others, or Zane's inability to face his past and realize that the mistakes he's made do not define his future. The book is broken up into four key chapters, four stories focusing on four of the main original ninja characters. Kai Ninja of Fire, Jay Ninja of Lightning, Zane Ninja of Ice, and Cole Ninja of Earth. If your kid is a longtime fan of the LEGO Ninjago show, this is definitely a book that will keep them entertained with a lot of callbacks to previous characters, villains, other side characters, and a lot of great references to the show in general. But at its core, Quest for the Lost Powers is a story about four young teen ninja who overcome personal barriers and become better people, better fighters, and better friends because of it. The first story is focused around Kai. The main emotional arc that Kai goes through is that without his elemental powers, he essentially feels useless. He doesn't really know his own worth, and he feels that his fire powers define who he is as a person, and as such, he's feeling rather lost in terms of where he is in life. This is a story arc that he's gone through a couple of times in the TV show, but it's been a few years since Kai has gone through this struggle, so it made sense to reincorporate into the book itself. Over the course of the story, Kai refuses to accept help from his good friend Skylar and eventually has to learn to overcome his personal insecurities and learn that accepting help is not a bad thing, and asking others to help you is not a sign of weakness but instead a sign of emotional strength. This was Kai's main arc over this particular chapter, where he really starts off feeling that he should not ask anyone for help, he used to be able to take care of himself, but after he lost his powers at the end of the latest crystallized season, he really felt that he didn't have a place in life, and the story was about learning that not only is he a great fighter, a great hero, and can protect people without his powers, but he also can learn to accept help from others, especially when he's at his lowest point. And at your lowest point, your friends are there for you to be able to help you regain your strength and regain your inner steel, and eventually, for Kai, in the literal metaphorical sense, regain his powers, where it was an emotional barrier preventing him from using his fire powers until he finally chose to accept help, chose to be vulnerable in front of his friends and accept that needing help is sometimes a good thing and it is totally okay to ask for help, that's when he got his powers back and it was through that lesson that caused him to change and grow as a character. Moving onwards to the next story, this one focused on Ice Ninja Zane. Out of the four different stories, this was the most personal. It didn't deal with one of the ninja facing an external threat, but instead, Zane, due to the fact that he is a ninjroid or ninja plus android, basically allowed him to go deep inside his head and face some of the things that he may have been confronted with in the past, but never really got a chance to find an emotional conclusion to on the show itself. 
For instance, there was a moment in an early season of LEGO Ninjago Tournament of Elements where Zane had recently rebuilt himself into a fully robotic body, he had sacrificed himself the previous season, and he was really grappling with who he was as an individual, and whether or not he was a replacement to his older self, and what it really meant to be a ninjroid and sentience as a robotic character. That's a really cool concept that thankfully is fully explored in the book itself, whereas in the show, it wasn't really given that much time to shine. But the main thing that this story addresses is Zane being able to finally come to terms with his past as a brainwashed villain. In Season 11, Zane was sent back into the past in a completely different realm, his memories were erased, and he was tricked into becoming a villain known as the Ice Emperor, who committed very terrible acts of destruction and chaos, and terrorized an entire realm until his friends were able to save him and revert the brainwashing. Unfortunately, since this happened in the finale of the TV season, this wasn't really ever explored as part of Zane's character after that particular season. But thankfully, the writers of the book actually went back to give Zane a full resolution for the character, with the main lesson being that as long as he was actually fighting back, he can come to terms with the fact that he is a good person at his core, and it is that belief in yourself that really is the most important thing. Again, each of these stories has a particular lesson or moral that is the main focus of the story itself, making it a great book for kids to read and be engaged with, especially kids asking questions about what happened with the Ice Emperor, or what happened back in Tournament of Elements, but also is a really good way to teach life lessons to kids that are really deep and have a good impact on future maturity. Moving on to the third story that was focused on Cole, Master of Earth, and he was losing his powers, but he dealt with things very differently than his other ninja. Instead of sulking around or diving deep into his memories, Cole simply left to go relax on the farm to help people, and he realized very early on that even without his powers, he can still do some good in the world. The emotional barrier that Cole had to overcome was truly understanding that family is what gives him strength, and even though that there was a clash between early seasons, he had a conflict between himself and his father, and his mother passed away when he was very young, he was finally able to come to terms with this in this particular story, and realize that people cope with trauma differently, and even if you might not accept the way that somebody copes with trauma, or you might not understand how one person can cope with grief compared to to you, you can come to terms with it when it comes to your family, when it comes to building bonds together with Cole and his father, for example. That was a major, wholesome story that really focused on the family themes that are one of the main focus points of Cole's entire stories across the entire Ninjago show. And finally, we come to Lightning Ninja J. The main lesson that Jay learns is really understanding that he doesn't need his biological parents to be loved and to have a family because found family is just as important as biological family. To provide some context, it was revealed in an early season that Jay was actually adopted. For whatever reason, he was given up for adoption, and he essentially found this new family, whether it be via his adoptive parents Ed and Edna, or his comrades the ninja and his mentors. He has built a family over the course of seasons, but he never really understood why he was given up for adoption by his biological family, never really found out what happened to his mother, or why his father had to give him up. This was something that never got resolved over the course of the show, but thankfully was given resolution in this book, where the main lesson is that Jay was able to learn that people don't need biological parents, a biological family, to find a family yourselves. The way the story tells this is by Jay actually uncovering an ancient civilization that raised children as groups of people. They basically formed families that were not biological, They this old civilization would raise children as a group, and he really was able to connect with this civilization and realize that essentially, that's the same way that he was raised as well. Whether it be via his adoptive parents or his own found family, that was the most important lesson for him to learn. Overall, I found that it was really great that every single one of the four core characters actually went through an emotional arc. Finding and rediscovering their elemental powers was the reward after being able to overcome an emotional, personal difficulty. And each one of the four stories teaches a very important life lesson to kids. Whether it be knowing when to accept help, being able to come to terms with mistakes you've made in the past and be at peace with them, Understanding that people cope with grief and turmoil in different ways, but it's your family that makes you strong. And finally, last but not least, it is knowing that you don't need a biological family in order to find a family yourself in your own way. 
Each of those is something that is really personal to each of the main characters, but also acts as incredibly good points for kids to be able to learn and mature as they grow into young adults. And this was the perfect way to tell these stories, it was perfectly set up by the final episode of the last season, and especially for younger readers, there's a lot to learn, but there's also a lot of fun and action to be had. Alright, and with that we have summed up our look at the latest canon Ninjago book which fits right into the storyline of the TV show Ninjago Crystallized that was Ninjago Quest for the Lost Powers. You can find this book pretty much available anywhere where books are sold as well as on lego.com. Thank you for tuning in to LEGO Life, I hope you found this video helpful and bye for now.